if I cover the top of the, the resonator with my hand, this is the kind of sound that we get. There's slight resonance there, but the actual core of the sound is quite dead and choked. However, if I take my hand away, we go from this There's a huge difference there because suddenly we're able to fill our whole environment with such incredible sound colors. produces a vast variety of information. Data is coming off of all of the activities that we conduct every day. Where we go, who we talk to, the way that we live, it's coming off the things uh, that we use in our world. But in a lot of ways, the data they produce is invisible. We don't see it. Take airplanes themselves, for example. In a test flight, thousands of sensors on wing flaps and tail rudders uh, produce 50 million readings for a single test flight. When the data gets expanded for analysis, 50 million data points become 500 million. Multiple flights quickly add up to billions of individual records. Then comes the time to analyze it. There's no escape from sound. The level of sound that we feed ourselves is entirely personal, but obviously a lot of it we can't control either. But we can control the way we digest it, the way we analyze it, the way we think about it, and therefore the way it affects us. In order to make what I do as a profession, as a sound creator, something that's fresh and, and where it's always got that sense of curiosity to it, I need to go deeper in the sounds to really, really develop that listening skill and not just to take things on surface level. So big data is, it's not a particular technology, it's not a particular solution. It's not even a special kind of data. It's a phenomenon. And big data's true name is the datafication of everything. Datafication is simply the capture and the use of more data in more daily activities. What we can do now is provide machines that will crunch nearly 200 million records in a single minute in order to calculate one individual reading, which means that it cuts the time in between test flights, which means that more test flights can happen more quickly, which means that more planes can be delivered more quickly, and in fact, there's a backlog of demand for new planes in the market. The other thing that's happening with the datafication of everything is the ability to capture a greater variety of data in a greater variety of shapes. It's not well known, but data has a shape. And if you picture a spreadsheet, the rectangle is the most powerful shape in all of the data universe. But in the world of the datafication of everything, you don't get to say what the shape of the data is. Some of it is kind of hierarchical, has little branches sticking off of it. Well, these little data things can now be captured and held and stored all in the same repository, but keep their individual shapes. And this means that you can always go back to the original when you discover you have new questions to ask.
Deafness for me is something whereby it does not mean you cannot hear. You may just simply not be perceiving things in a way that most other people can. When I began losing my hearing, it was a very confusing matter. I felt that in order to hear, everything had to be louder. And when I started playing percussion, my teacher actually introduced me to the fact that, well, a drum resonates. So if a drum resonates, why can't we resonate? So when I started striking the drums, I did in fact feel literally through my body the vibration of that particular instrument. You can feel through your feet, you can feel through your cheekbones, through the scalp and so on, through your fingertips. So really deafness and hearing is all about paying attention, it's about concentration, it's about focus. When you pop all of those words together, you have hearing, but hearing in many different forms. You have to ask yourself, why does an orchestra have a conductor? Why can't they all just listen to each other? They can all hear, quote unquote, but actually the way sound transmits and the complexities of sound, it's, it's a hugely complex subject. One of the really exciting possibilities about the datification of everything is actually a flowering of creation, of invention. One of the keys here is to think about information, think about data as a raw material, as a resource. And so it is very much a, a, a fuel for innovation. And this has happened before. This was the case with electricity. Power could then be delivered cost-effectively to almost anywhere you wanted it. This made it possible to create entirely new products, electric motors that could drive organs bellows, new medical devices. But it also opened up entirely new industries. Big data is the same. It is a new kind of power that changes everything it touches. When you detect more data, you find it's not all connected. It's not true that everything is connected to everything else. It is true that everything is connected to something else. Think of it like the transportation network of the world. So if you picture the airports of the world with all of these tens of thousands of flights crisscrossing every day, it looks like this set of connections. But not every flight is connected to every other one. And it's the same thing that happens when you gather more data together of greater variety and detect more of the world. It doesn't create a perfect, complete picture. It creates many, many, many more interconnections. The challenge then is how to recompose this great diversity of data into a new perspective that then helps you understand the larger picture. When I was asked to write the music for Big Data, I really wanted to approach this piece of music by thinking, how can we allow our listeners, our participators of what we do as musicians to go deeper in the sounds that they're experiencing? Stripping it right back, I found that there was a lot in using less instruments, using sounds where you could really have a chance to digest that sound and not to overload the system. We have unconventional ways of using pretty conventional instruments. When you put a snare drum on top of a timpani and manipulate the pedal of that timpani, suddenly it becomes a totally different instrument and a, a different experience. 
I want people to really understand the journey of a bowed crotale or just a single note on a vibraphone, a simple melody from a vibraphone or just this kind of gurgling rolled marimba chord, you know, time to really digest, to smell it, to feel it, to taste it, you know, everything about the sound. body up almost like a resonating chamber and imagine the body is a huge ear, suddenly the vibration is, is seeped through the whole body but it's just this idea that everything is resonating but we can't see it but if we pay attention more we will actually perceive it more and it becomes a much more interesting, fascinating, emotional journey. And so the same way that you might look at a drum, and if there's no audio, when you strike it, you can see the strike, but you don't hear it. Right now, that's a lot of what's happening in the world. The drum is being hit, but we're not picking up what it produces. And in the datafication of everything, you can think of it as the invisible being made audible the invisible being made visible, the invisible being made sensible. 